Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on using mats and masks inside Final Cut Pro. The whole idea of effects is to be able to see portions of one shot and not see portions of another, but how you do that is the domain of mats and masks, which is what we're going to be talking about today. My goal today is to show you how to use a variety of key, mask, and mat filters in Final Cut Pro. While I'm using Final Cut 7 for these demos, almost all of these techniques will also work in Final Cut 5 and Final Cut 6. We'll cover 11 different video filters and effects, all revolving around compositing using masks. Specifically, I'll show you how to create a Luma key, an Alpha key, a green screen key, and the benefits and disadvantages of using Matte Choker and Matte Magic. I'll show how to create a traveling mat, an extraction mat, garbage mat, image mask, mask shape, and use the feather tools to soften the edge of the shape. Create a vignette using the soft edges effect, and we'll wrap up with a widescreen mask. Before we do, though, two quick definitions. First, mask is the process of hiding a portion of a clip or an image to reveal an image below it. Mat combines two or more image elements to form a single final image. Essentially, mat and compositing are synonyms. Mask is the process. Mat is the result. This is a Luma key. Now, there are three different key types inside Final Cut. There are Luma keys, Alpha Channel keys, and there are Chroma or green screen keys. A Luma key does its key based upon the luminance or brightness value of a clip. An Alpha key does its key based upon the alpha or transparency information in a clip. And a green screen or Chroma key does its key based upon the color or Chroma information in a clip. Final Cut supports all three of these keys, and I'll show you how all three of them work, starting with the Luma key. For instance, here, in this sequence, I've got a piece of video of the Grand Canyon, and I've decided to have a vacation at the Grand Canyon, so I created a vacation sticker that says Grand Canyon Vacation, $499. I figured it was my vacation. I should set the price. Well, how do we create this effect? Well, inside Photoshop, I created this pinwheel effect. Now, maybe it looks like a saw blade, but I think pinwheel is much friendlier. So we're going to call this a pinwheel today. This is a TIFF image. It does not move. Notice that my playhead is playing, but the image does not change. This is a still graphic that I drew in Photoshop, or you could have downloaded something like this from the web as a JPEG or saved it as a PNG. Whether it's a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF, or even a piece of video makes no difference in the process of how this works, but most often a Luma key is done with a still image. What a Luma key does is it takes the bright part of an image and separates it from the dark part of an image, either superimposing the darker part or superimposing the lighter part. In my case, I want to make the dark transparent and the light opaque. Well, one of the tests we have to find out is what is transparent in a clip. And to do that, we're going to change the display of the canvas by going up to this third pop-up and changing it from RGB, which means to display the image, to alpha plus RGB. Now, the alpha describes the transparency information in a clip. In fact, alpha and transparency are synonyms. It's just that alpha sounds sexier. That part of the clip that's red is opaque. That part of the clip that's not red is transparent. And so far, this entire pinwheel graphic is opaque. There's no transparency information anywhere. That's what a Luma key does, is it makes a portion of the clip transparent. Let me reset this and go back to RGB. The way we're going to do that is we're going to select the clip, go up to the Effects menu, go down to Video Filters, and go down to Key. By the way, all the effects that I'm about to show you ship with Final Cut. No third-party software is involved. In the Key category, I'm going to select Luma Key. And it makes the white transparent and inserts the Grand Canyon shot behind it, and the black remains opaque cool, but not the effect that I want. I double-click the clip to load it up into the viewer, click the Filters tab, and where it says View, I'm going to change the view to Matte. We're going to be working with this a lot 
throughout this entire webinar. That which is white is opaque. That which is black is transparent. Currently, the way this key is set is it says key out brighter, meaning make the brighter part of the clip transparent. In this case, I'm going to say key out darker. Make the darker part of the clip transparent and copy that transparency to the alpha or the transparency channel, not to the image. Copy it to the transparency channel. The way we adjust this is by using the threshold. If I drag the threshold up, notice how the white becomes less solid white. It becomes translucent. That's never what you want with a mat. You want to have that which is foreground to be solid white and that which you want background to be solid black. In general, I adjust the threshold first to make sure I've got a nice clean key. Then if I need to make adjustments to it, I'll adjust tolerance. For graphics that are created on the computer, you almost never need to touch the tolerance. But for graphics that are photographed with a camera where the lighting may not be even or your black levels may not be solid black, generally adjusting both the threshold and the tolerance become necessary. Remember, your goal is to set this as two different levels, white, which is opaque, and black, which is transparent. When we're done, we change the view from matte to final, and there's our final effect. Our white pinwheel is keyed into the background.